right, so like we talked about in the article, uh, one of the biggest priorities or points of emphasis that we can put on the neck and the cervical region in the training setting is, is really just good coaching, good cueing, and, and making sure that we are putting the athlete in the best position to succeed, um, and in, of course within good efficacy and safety. So with that, if we start with something simple like a hinge, what we'll notice a lot on a hinge is we'll get a lot of rounding angles in the low back, and that'll normally correspond with this cervical extension as they go into the hinge. Now, if you're an Olympic weightlifter or if you're a powerlifter, I know that the positions are cued a little bit differently, but outside of those contexts, the way that I like to cue the neck and head for a hinge is to try to make a double chin and just think keeping your head neutral. So if my chest is up, my eyes are up, as I go into my hinge, my chest comes down, my eyes are down. So I'm never deliberately looking up or down. So even if we were to do something like a, a single leg uh, RDL, <clears throat> where there's a little bit of angulation or rotation to it, I'm still gonna maintain that same principle. Chest is up, eyes are up. Chest is down, eyes are down. Now, if we go to the rotational positioning or, or mechanics of the head, this is where we have a little bit more room for interpretation, where if you're trying to get disassociation of the cervical and thoracic junctions, you're going to cue the head one way, whereas if you're trying to get more of a trunk or a core focus, you're going to cue the head the other way. So if I'm just doing something like a simple chop here, naturally I want the head to rotate with the body. Now if I'm trying to do something that is a little bit more cervical thoracic disassociation, then I'm going to focus more on this rotational pattern where I don't really have as much head movement. I personally am not going to cue that very often. With almost all rotation, I want everything to move as one segment. But there is, again, certain situations or reasons why you would want to have a different head position uh, relative to the body. The last thing I'll mention on that is a good cue for rotational patterns for me is let your eyes follow your hands. So if I'm doing any kind of chopping pattern or if I'm doing any kind of bed ball pattern, I want my eyes to follow my hands so that there's congruency between the neck and then the upper back. 